welcome one and all don't we all love stories stories cross the barriers of time past present and future stories allow us to experience the similarities between ourselves and others real and imagined आओ बच्चों आज तुम्हें एक कहानी सुनाता हूं मैं शेर की कहानी सुनोगे मेरे पास आओ मेरे दोस्तों एक किस्सा सुनो मेरे पास आओ मेरे दोस्तों एक किस्सा सुनो कई साल पहले की ये बात है भयानक अंधेरी सिया रात में लिए अपनी बंदूक में हाथ में घने जंगलों से गुजरता हुआ कहीं जा रहा था घने जंगलों से गुजरता हुआ कहीं जा रहा था नहीं भूलती उफ वो जंगल की रात मुझे याद है वो थी मंगल की रात चला जा रहा था मैं डरता हुआ हनुमान चाली सपड़ता हुआ बोलो हनुमान की जय कि जय जय बजरंग बली की जय हा बोलो हनुमान की जय हे जय हो बजरंग बली की जय घड़ी थी अंधेरा मगर सक था कोई दस सवा दस का बस वक्त था लरजता था कोयल की भी कूक से बुरा हाल हुआ उस पर भूख से लगा तोड़ने एक बेरी से बेर मेरे सामने आ गया एक शेर बचाओ बचाओ अरे भागो अरे भागो अरे भागो खुदा की कसम मजा आ गया मुझे मार कर बेसरम खा गया खा गया? लेकिन आप तो जिंदा हैं। अरे ये जीना भी कोई जीना है लल्लू है ला 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 Yes, I agree. Sometimes life seems absolutely meaningless. It feels like we are being devoured by the lion of loneliness, loss, hopelessness, or a thousand other things that we did not expect. So what do we do? we connect through stories and life indeed becomes more meaningful so today we bring to you a unique group of people well fictional young people to tell you their stories who are they and what's special about them are they angels you ask of course not they are people like you and me with a little bit of naughty and a whole lot of nice <laughs> look 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 can you see that little boy walking down the road carrying a bag full of books wearing a white shirt a black cap and a white dhoti that reaches just below his knee oh and look look There comes a little girl in a sari, a ring on her nose, earrings dangling from her little ears, and little jingling bells in her anklet. Come, come, let's see what they are saying. Come, come, come with me. I have to hurry up. I can see the dark clouds and hear the thunder. It's about to rain. Hey. Who are you? Where are you from? And where are you going all alone? 
Oh, Deva, so many questions. I am actually a character from the book Swami and Friends, written by R.K. Narayan. My name is W.S. Swaminathan from Malgudi, but everyone calls me Swami. What do you mean alone? I am nine years old and I am on my way to school. Now, tell me who you are. Going to school, eh? How I wish I can go to school and study. You see, I am from the late 19th century. And in my village in Bengal, women are not allowed to read and write. I come from the pages of the Gyan Pit award-winning novel, Pratham Pratishwati, or The First Promise, written in Bengali by Asha Purna Devi. Oh, I almost forgot. My name is Chottabhati, and I have been married for a year now. But because I am just eight years old, I get to stay with my parents till I'm old enough to go to my in-laws. You want to go to school? You must be mad. Oh, you are so lucky that you get to stay at home and play a whole day. I have to do so much homework. Five sums in profit and loss in maths, copy down a page from the eighth lesson in English and write meanings of difficult words. And then there is geography. I hate geography. The other day, my geography teacher asked me, what is Lisbon famous for? For being the capital of Spain, I said. He scowled at me and asked, what do you know about the Indian climate? It is hot in summer and cold in winter, I answered. Stand up on the bench, he roared at me. For the rest of the class, I stood on the bench and counted caps on the other students' heads. <laughs> oh, I love it! Tell me more about yourself when you're school. After school, I play with my friends. There's Somu, the friendly class monitor. Mani is big and powerful, but a lazy bully. The most brilliant boy of the class is Shankar. And there is the P. <laughs> His actual name is Samuel, but we call him the P because he is so small. He makes me laugh more than anyone else. And then there is Rajan. He is not yet a friend. He is fearless, intelligent and rich. His father is the police superintendent. Yaro dosti pagi hasine yena ho to kya Yeah. 
with Rajam. You would readily abandon your old guy to be friends with Rajam, wouldn't you? Hmm? Don't be a smart ass. Do you know, my old gang has been so mean to me, they started calling me Rajam's tail. But, but now, all of us are friends again. Do you know, we used to play cricket at the MCC. MCC? What's MCC? MCC is the Malgadi Cricket Club. I was the star bowler and they used to call me Tate after Morris Tate, the, the famous bowler from England. Sadly, on the day of a very important match, I had a fight with my headmaster and threw his cane out the window. So you let them down? and did not turn up for the match. How irresponsible. Not my fault, was it? I, I knew my father would kill me if he came to know about the incident. So I ran away from home and got lost. When they finally found me, I was delirious with fever. That's why Rajam stopped talking to me. Then I heard that Rajam's father was transferred and they were moving away. It was like the world had become blank all of a sudden. I could not think of a world without Rajam. I wanted to be friends again, and so I decided to give him a book that I loved as a going away present. It was a tiny volume of Anderson's fairy tales that my father had bought in Madras years ago. I wrote on the flyleaf, to my dearest friend Rajam and ran to the station. Tell me, 
quickly. I'm dying to know. I looked at him from far and shouted, Oh, Rajam, Rajam, you are going away. When will you come back? Rajam held out his hand for the book I brought for him, took it and waved a farewell. I waved back frantically and broke down and sobbed. Though my friend Mani said that Rajam would write to me, I have my doubts. I sometimes wonder, does he ever think of me? Oh, don't worry. If he is a good friend, he will surely write to you. I too lost touch with my friends, Bunni, Debi, Bunti and Kedi, when I went to Shoshurbari, my in-laws house in Kolkata. There was no way of keeping in touch because none of them knew how to read and write. But in a way, I was fortunate. Everyone called me Father's Darling, which of course was true. My father cherished me for being his lucky girl. I was always very proud of him. He was the best Gobiraj Ayurvedic doctor in the area who, I thought, could make a dead man alive. And what personality? Tall and fair, the booming voice. Stern from the outside, but more and soft in the inside. No other girl in the village had such a father. Tera mutsi hai pehli kanata koi Kyun hi nahi dil lugata koi Tera mutsi hai pehli kanata koi Kyun hi nahi dil lugata koi Jaane tu must have gotten away with a lot, must have really manipulated him. No, never. I always spoke the truth and what I thought was right. The women in my household, my grandma, my aunts and others were always finding fault with me because I was the rebel who asked too many questions and spoke up against injustice. They thought I was a disgrace to the family for playing with all the boys and leading them in all sorts of mischiefs. Aha! So, what sort of mischievous behaviour were you up to? Tell me, tell me. <laughs> well, I loved to climb trees, swim in ponds, catch fish and rule over all the boys and girls of my village. <laughs> this one time, my friends and me went to the mango orchard on a dark night 
scout owls by spotting their glistening eyes. And another time, I made a poem to publicly shame my cousin, who had the audacity to beat his wife. Seriously? You did that? But how did you learn to read and write, seeing that you did not go to school? <laughs> I did it on the sly, without anyone's knowledge. Well, I used to watch my brother new when he was studying. I made a pen out of the leaves of a banyan tree. For ink, I used the sap of crushed fruits of Malabar spinach. And instead of paper, I practiced on palm leaves. Neil was so stupid that he made me laugh. Once, he said to me that if women studied, God took away their eyesight. What a dimwit! God could never be so partial. I'm sure that these rumours were all spread by brainless men like Neil. Also, if women were not meant to study, why is Shorashuti, the goddess of learning and knowledge, a woman? Come on, tell me. Okay, okay, I surrender. But did they ever find out that you had learned to read and write? How did that go? All hell broke loose. My mother dragged me in front of my father and cried, After all, she's a girl and married into a well-known family too. If they get to know, they'll refuse to take her. Obviously, my father wanted proof that I could actually write. So I took his real pen his and real ink and wrote on real paper. He then asked me, what was the point of women learning to read and write? I said that our maternal aunt who lived in Kolkata once told me that an English woman has opened a school for women who wanted to study. If women learned to read, they could read the scriptures and Ramayana and Mahabharata. What is the point of being born? if we have to depend on others for every little need, I inquired. He looked at me solemnly and asked, Do you want to study? Yes, I said and added, I don't understand the whole women community thing. Why should a girl be abused for wanting to learn? Then come to me every afternoon and I will teach you. You can use my pen and ink pot and paper. Tears of joy welled up in my eyes. As soon as I learned to read and write properly, I composed a poem in praise of the goddess of learning. Sure. You see, as long as we wear blinkers and blame fate for everything, we will not go anywhere. मन के मंजीरे आज खनकने लगे भूले थे चलना कदम थिरकने लगे अंग अंग बाजे मृदंग सा सुर मेरे जागे सांस सांस में बास बास में धुन कोई साजे गाए मुझको आने लगा है खुद पे ही एतबार खुद पे ही एतबार बाद तक झूले मेरे पहुंचने लगे आंखों के आगे गगन सिमटने लगे डाल डाल पे ताल ताल दे छुपे हवाए खेत खेत ने रेत रेत ने फैला ही बाहे आए 
सिंदूरी सुबह धोती जाए सियाही रातों की रातों की भूले जो दरवाजे तो देखा हर शी नहाई उजली उजली सी थी मेरी तनहाई रे बदली बदली सी बदली मेरे अंगना में थी छाई वीरानी रानी बनके मेरे पास आई अपनी नजर से मैंने देखी दुनिया की रंगोली मुझको बुलाने आई मौसम की डोली खोली आँखों की खोली मैंने पाई अपनी बोली मुझ में ही रहती थी मेरी हम जोली रे सुन लो अब ना अकेली हूँ मैं अपनी सहेली हूँ मैं साथी हूँ अपनी मैं साथी हूँ अपनी मन के मंजीरे आज खनकने लगे भूले थे चलना कदम थिरकने लगे अंग अंग बाजे मृदंग सा सुर मेरे जागे सांस सांस में बास बास में धुन कोई साजे गाए दिल ये गाने लगा है मुझको आने लगा है खुद पे ही एतबार बादल तक झूले मेरे पहुंचने लगे आंखों के आगे गगन सिमटने लगे डाल डाल पे ताल ताल दे छूके हवाए खेत खेत ने रेत रेत ने फैला ही बाहे आए सिंदूरी सुबह आए धोती जाए सियाही रातों की रातों की I would rather walk with a friend in the dark than alone in the light," said Helen Keller. But wait, who is that boy walking alone on the hilly road of Dehradun? His hands in his pockets and his head down. He looks about sixteen or seventeen. Pale, with fair hair and blue-gray eyes. Hello young man who are you Oh uh, you don't look Indian are you British I am Rusty the alter ego of Ruskin Bond from the book The Room on the Roof <laughs> I am what you call an Anglo Indian Both my parents died when I was very young and so a cousin of my father Mr John Harrison became my guardian He paid for my food, shelter, and education in an expensive school in the hills that was run on exclusively European lines. <laughs> Very noble of him, I must say. To take the responsibility of an orphan, it's not an easy thing to do. Noble, my foot. He thinks he has bought me, and I am his slave. wants me to obey his every command he doesn't even allow me to go to the local bazaar or play with local boys and if i don't obey him he canes me with his supple malacca cane kept in the glass cupboard in the drawing room oh my god that's terrible i take back my words what a monster so one day When he was away to Delhi I went to the bazaar and met two local boys Somi and Ranbir We ate spicy potato chaat and juicy golgappas and became friends best favorite friends Ranbir invited me to play holi 
Oh, that must have been so much fun. It was. We painted the whole town and ourselves with colors of rainbow. But when I got back, Mr. Harrison was waiting for me with a supple malacca cane in his hand, his face twitching and full of fire. Filth, he said, almost spitting the words in my face. My God, what filth. Then his wrist moved suddenly and the cane cut across my face like a knife, stabbing and burning into my cheek. Do you know what you look like? He shouted. Well, I'll tell you what you look like. You look like the mongrel that you are. That's a lie, I said. It's the truth. I've tried to bring you up as an Englishman, as your father would have wished. But as you won't have it our way, I'm telling you that he was about the only thing English about you. You're no better than the sweeper boy. He was about to hit me a second time when I wrapped my arms around his legs and pulled on them with all my strength. <laughs> he went over, falling flat on his back. Next morning, when I told Somi, he said with a half smile on his lips, good, now you can come with and stay with me. He found me a job teaching English to a boy named Kishin in return for a tiny room on the roof and food. So finally, I found a loving family and my independence. I finally felt like there was a power in my body, a devil or a god. And that day, I became a man. How many roads must a man walk down before you can call him a man? Yes, and how many seas must a wife down say? Before she sleeps in the sand Yes, and how many times must the cannonballs fly Before they are forever banned The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind The answer is blowing in the wind How many deaths will it take till he knows that too many people have died? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. This is for the kids who die, black and white. For kids will die certainly. The old and the rich will live on a while, as always, eating blood and gold. Letting kids die. Listen, kids who die, maybe now there'll be no monument for you, except in our hearts. Maybe your bodies will be lost in a swamp or a prison grave, or the potter's field, or the rivers where you're drowned like Libnect. But the day will come, you are sure yourselves that it is coming, when the marching feet of the masses will raise for you a living monument of love, and joy, and laughter, and black hands and white hands clasped as one, and a song that reaches the sky, the song of the new life triumphant through the kids who die. It's the simple things in life that make us happy. A pigeon in the skylight, a ray of sunshine, a melodious bird song, a good book by the bedside, a potted geranium, a blue umbrella, a pair of tongs. 
Oh God, what am I rambling on about? <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. Now I want you to open your mind's eye and visualize the undulating green hills of Garhwal guarded by the snow-picked mighty mountains. And behold that little fair girl with pink cheeks, dark eyes and black hair tied in pigtails. Look, look, she's scrambling barefoot over the rocks, running over the short summer grass, up and below the hill, all the time calling out to her cows. Neelu, blue is the name of the blue-grey cow. The other one, which is white, is called Gori, meaning the fair one. She's wearing pretty glass bangles on her wrists and a necklace of glass beads from which hangs a bear's claw. It's a lucky charm and she always wears it. Uh, she is probably 10. Oh, and over there goes a tiny little boy. He doesn't have any shoes on his feet. His clothes may be old, but that has not dented his happiness in any way. The world might like to strike him with innumerable miseries, but his innocent gaze is enough to vanquish them all. Let's see what happens when they meet. Come, come, come with me. Hey, little boy, well, where are you off to? Aren't you too young to be going off all by yourself? Oh, I don't have. My name is Hamid. I have walked out a story named Idgar, written by Munshi Blemjan. I may be little, but I can take care of myself. You see, both my Abu Jan and Ami Jan have gone to visit Allah. So I live with my granny, Daddy Jan, Amina. But when my Abu Jan returns with a bag full of coins, and Ami Jan returns from Allah with goodies and sweets, I will not be poor anymore. Then I will see how Mahmud, Mohsin, Nuri, and Sami show off their coins to me.
I see. So your parents are with Allah. Well, my dad has also gone to God, and I live with my mother and my elder brother Biju. My name is Binoya Devi, but everyone calls me Binoya. Raskin Bond created me in his story, The Blue Umbrella. You know, one day I was out in the hills looking after my cows when I saw a group of city people from the plains. They often come here for picnics. All of them so smart and well dressed. The women in bright saris and the men in light summer ch- shirts. Children had pretty new clothes, but you know what caught my eye? It was the prettiest blue umbrella with frills. I fell in love with it, so I exchanged my lucky charm necklace for the umbrella. That was really clever of you. Even though I am younger than you, I think what I did on the day of Eid was cleverer. Dadi Jan had only given me three pesa as Eidi to spend at the Eid fair. My friends, Mahmud, Mohsen, Nori, and Sami, first went on all the rides, then ate all the rudi, blood jamun, sohan halwa. They could and no one bothered to share with me. Mahmud bought a little clay soldier. Mawson went for the water carrier with his back bent down and holding the water skin with one hand. Nori chose a lawyer and Sammy bought a flute. But I just looked dumb. What could I do? With just three pesos in my pocket, I had to spend wisely. I wanted to buy something which would outlast all their toys and would be used to daddy jam. Because I know when elderly people bless someone, God listens and their prayers are immediately granted. Kisi ki muskurahato pe ho nisa Kisi ka dard mil sake to le udhaar Kisi ke vaasate ho tere dil mein pyaar Jeena isi ka naam hai Kisi ki muskurahato pe ho nisa Kisi ka dard mil sake to le udhaar किसी के वास्ते हो तेरे दिल में प्यार जीना इसी का नाम है जेब से फकीर है फिर भी यारो दिल के हम अमीर है माना अपनी जेब से फकीर है फिर भी यारो दिल के हम अमीर है मिटे जो प्यार के लिए वो जिंदगी जले बहार के लिए वो जिंदगी किसी को हो ना हो हमें तो ऐतबार जीना इसी का नाम है at all? Or did he just come back with nothing? Tell me, did you buy a toy? Or not? I am little, but not stupid, you see. When all the boys moved away, I went to the ironsmith and bought a pair of tongs for Daddy John. You must be wondering why a small boy would buy a pair of iron tongs. You see, I have noticed that when Daddy John pulls rotis from the oven, her hand would often get scalded. Actually, she does not have the time or money to go to the market. 
so she burns her hands every day. And who says they're not a toy? They saw on your shoulder, it looks like a gun. Hold it on your hand, it becomes the tongues of a mendicant. I can catch you with the nose with it. If I, I, if I, if I strike with them, I can destroy all my friends' toys to dust. Their toys cannot be a match for my tongue's strength. It is a courageous line, this tongue of mine. I like the way you think. I know people can be very jealous. Everyone in my village wanted my own blue umbrella. Though it was not much of use during heavy rains or strong sun, I liked to show it off. Old Rum Barossa, who kept a tea shop on Teheri Road, wanted it so bad that he sent his shop boy Rajram to steal it from me. But my brother Biji gave him a good thrashing and did not let that happen. So from that day, Ram the Trustworthy became the umbrella thief and no one went to his shop anymore. So instead of making people happy, you made them sad and jealous. I didn't like you at all. And to top it all, you also ruined Ram Pedalsa's business. You are so mean. Don't you accuse me of being mean without hearing the whole story. After that day, I would pass Rambarosa's shop every day, but could not bear to look at his long face and the sad condition of his shop. Finally, one day, I went to his shop to buy sweets and left the umbrella there. He called out to me, but I told him to keep it. I didn't need it anymore, because I realised that an umbrella isn't everything. See, I am not a mean girl, after all. But Hamid, you didn't tell us what had happened when you got home. What did Daddy Jan say? I bet she was very happy. When I got home, Daddy Jan at first beat her breast and started crying. What a stupid boy! It's noon and he hasn't eaten or drunk anything. And what does he bring back? A pair of tongs. I thought she'd be happy, but I felt very sad at her reaction. I looked at the ground and replied, You burn your hands at the griddle every day, don't you? And then a strange thing happened. Daddy Jan, at first, began to weep uncontrollably, like a young girl. She lifted both her hands and sent up prayers and blessings for me, while large drops of tears streamed down her face. What just happened? I will never understand the way grown-ups behave. But I am glad to know that you finally decided to part with your prized possession. That must have made Amparosa very happy. The other day, when I was passing by, he called out to me and gave me a thin silver chain with a locket made of fair cloth in exchange for my blue umbrella. It would be my lucky charm. I notice that he has kept the umbrella outside and gives it to anyone who needs it. It is faded and patchy, but it is still the best umbrella in the village. Ram Bharosa said to me that he'll never forget the smile she gave him when she left the shop. And then she began to sing because she knew that music brings happiness and washes away the blues. Everyone heard her sing. She walked home through the darkening glade, singing of the birds and the bees, singing of the flowers and plants, stars and moon, rivers and waterfall. And the trees stood still and listened to her. And the mountains we're glad.
Did that bring a smile to your lips, spring a song in your heart? Did you see the rainbow and touch the pot of gold at the end? Thank you so much for joining us in this journey through the wonderful tales from across the subcontinent. Sangeet Foundation is delighted to partner with D Montfort University and host the first event of Mana Vutsav 2020, the digital festival organized for the South Asian diaspora. Sangeet Foundation believes in happiness through music and the arts, and we hope that we are able to bring a little bit of cheer to you. Keep smiling, stay happy, stay safe. Thank you. <laughs>